What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at Home Depot in Bullhead City, Arizona, and we're going to go through the lumber section and we're going to show you the five woods we would definitely avoid for sign carving. So stick with us, we'll get to it. All right guys, so here's the deal. I was looking at my stats the other day for the YouTube channel, and we found out that about 60% of you guys that are watching are not subscribers. So we're gonna have a little verbal contract here. If you watch more than two of our videos, click that little subscribe button. We are this close to 50,000. Help us out here, guys. Hey guys, all right, so this is first one we're doing, but these aren't in any particular order. This is just one of the five that I really am skeptical about. And let me tell you why. This is the common board. This is a Home Depot's common board. Uh, I, at Lowe's, it might be called white wood. I don't know, I've seen it called several different things, but basically it's a pine, but it's a really low grade of pine. This is what I used way back when, when I started, I used this common board. And the reason I use it is because they had the alternative with select pine, but it was like twice the price and it still is. But what I found is this stuff, I just got it back to the shop, even though it was flat here uh, and I would pick out flat boards, it would cup, it would warp, it would split. It just gave me so many uh, problems. Being as a uh, one by 20, uh, one by 12, uh, 24 inches long, I'm gonna get a hundred bucks for it or, or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. So I'm getting my money out of it. But uh, just to give you an idea, this is a select pine. I would much rather carve the select pine than this. I don't have any knots to go. And this is about 35 bucks. This is about, you know, 18 bucks. So it's right at twice the price. Uh, definitely go with select pine. So common board, I would stay away from it. You know, you could get some pieces out of there, but common board, I would stay away from it completely. So another one to stay away from is thin veneered plywood. Now, Home Depot has got a great selection of all kinds of different plywoods, different thicknesses, and some of them have really nice faces on them. But the problem is, if you're gonna carve into a thin veneer plywood, then by the time you get to your sanding, it's gonna take no time at all to, to sand right through that nice veneer. You gotta really take your time and look at the side of the board and Sometimes they're hard to see. In fact, this one almost fooled me and dad. We were all excited to get something and get this and carve something on it. But you really want to take your time and look and try to find the difference between the veneer and the core. Now, if you're going to paint this whole thing, then it's not that big a deal, right? Because you don't need to sand it. But if you're going to do kind of our normal process where you spray with primer and sand it off with no paint, it's just not going to work for you. You're going to get through that veneer right down into the core and it's gonna look a little rough. So over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about these um, plastic woods. I'm calling them plastic decking, the Trex, the different brands of types of decking. And if you could use this stuff, it would be great because obviously it's never gonna go bad. It's gonna be a one and done. It's never gonna go bad. However, uh, I have tried it way back when now I haven't tried any of the brand new ones, but I've tried several brands of this stuff. It just doesn't work. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't carve well. It doesn't sand. It doesn't take the black well. It just, you know, it's mostly plastic. It's, it's not really, it's more, I think it's more plastic than it is wood. So it just doesn't lend itself. Even though I would like to say it would be great if you could use this stuff. It just doesn't work out. At least in my experience, it hasn't worked out. Stuff is great for decking, but for signs, nah, it's a no-go for me. So next on the list not to use is pressure treated. Now I will say that when we were back in Hickory, North Carolina, their pressure treated stuff didn't look like the pressure treated stuff here in Bullhead City. This stuff is perforated and it's got this stain on it. Um, I have tried this stuff. The problem is that um, number one, in order to get down below the perforation, you got to plane a bunch of it off anyway. That's number one. Number two, you never know what this stuff's got in it. I wouldn't be breathing it for sure. I wouldn't want to. 
And number three, they use the lowest grade material that they could possibly find. At least that's my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but the stuff that I've seen when I finally surface this stuff down, it is junk it, it, for sign carving. It's great for building fences and construction. It's great. But for sign carving, it is terrible. It is, uh, I believe it's a Doug fir and it's probably the Doug fir uh, version that they can't not put a stain on it just because it just, it's, uh, trust me guys, don't use this stuff. Now, if you have pressure treated stuff like the stuff we saw in North Carolina, that stuff actually looked pretty good, but I don't really don't know what they're pressure treating it with. So I'd be really careful. Definitely use a respirator if you're going to use it. Um, anyway, I just stay away from pressure treated and we've done fairly, uh, several videos over the years talking about pressure treated. It's stuff that I get questions on actually on a regular basis, probably a couple times a month, I get a question on pressure treated material. I would stay away from it guys. That's my opinion. So last on the list is Doug fir. Now this is called fir uh, framing lumber. And this is probably the most tempting on the list to say, oh yeah, I can make a sign out of that because it actually looks pretty nice. Sometimes it's straight, sometimes it's not. But the main reason you don't want to use this stuff is because it carves like a brick. It just does not work well. It's super hard grain and it's just not meant for carving. Don't forget, they're using it for framing lumber because it's all going to get covered. This is the cheapest of the cheap stuff, right? It's like uh, trying to use a high point instead of a Glock. Not the best idea. And something else to think about is most of the time, this stuff is pretty wet. It's got a high moisture content. So you're gonna have to let it dry. And when it dries, it's gonna warp, it's gonna bend, it's gonna twist. It's not gonna look like it look, looked when you bought it. So stay away from Doug fur because you will regret it. I promise. Now, that's not to say somebody out there hasn't car carved a nice sign out of Doug fur, but if you want some consistency, I would definitely stay away from it. All right, there you go, guys. That's five woods that we would definitely avoid if you're going to Home Depot. Um, it's not that they might not work for you, but uh, we think that there's so much other stuff there that is better for sign carving. Again, not to put Home Depot down, They've got a great variety of all kinds of different stuff, but uh, there's just some we would avoid uh, as far as sign carving. So hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. We love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.